Hello, this is a quick update for Chris P's feature packed a startup file which you can get from patreon.com slash Chris P. I've updated the file now for Blender 3.1, so let's jump right into Blender and see what's new. Alrighty, here I am in Blender 3.1.2 stable. And once you downloaded the startup file from Patreon, you can simply open it in Blender and then this is what you get. If you already know the startup file, you are probably familiar with this. I have this shader ball in here just to demonstrate some of the different materials that the startup file comes with, like this white plastic with scratches and imperfections, uh, some metallic paint. I have this uh, backdrop here, the seamless backdrop with this sort of um, cutting board uh, texture on it. And you can already see that it comes with some assets because this is the asset browser. I'll show you how to use those uh, a little later. It also has this changelog file. So this is the changelog, the stuff that I change, I keep writing into this file. You already know that it comes with this uh, crazy setup for the compositor with some cool effects in here. You know what? I'm just going to render an image quick. Okay, so you can see this is the, the render result and this would be the compositor's result. I have a sharpen node in here, a special one. You can always go into these nodes and see what they do. The glare node and anamorphic lens. You can see that here, which give these nice lens flares. We have the fake volume one and two. Lens distortion is switched on. I have a lens dirt and sensor dirt. These are all uh, muted here, but you can simply uh, unmute the nodes and then you can uh, add different effects in the compositor. I took out the denoiser here in the compositor because it is now very easy in Blender to just uh, switch on or off denoising here in the, the render properties tab. Uh, a few details changed inside of some of these nodes, but other than that, this is still the same. Uh, the file also still comes with the bullet time render effect. Uh, I have a video here on the channel if you're interested in what that does. Basically, essentially, you can do a physics simulation, like maybe an explosion, and then freeze frame or freeze the animation in that position and then rotate the camera around. So like that bullet time effect, you know, from the matrix. Um, check out the video if you're interested in that. I also have the render and um, a script in here still. That is if you want to render uh, animation nodes, animations, the animation nodes sometimes crash during the rendering and for some reason they don't if you use this script. The startup file has a few node groups in here like the directional scratches. You can go into those and check those out, how this is put together. Imperfections, you can check that out. So these are shader node groups and this white plastic material that is on the outside here uses this sort of setup. Then there's the metallic shaders, um, the, the orange one and the blue one. There's this black plastic one. This one also has the dust shader on it, which is a special shader that simulates dust on top of things. And it also behaves physically accurate. So if you look at it, with the, if you move the camera to look straight down, it's less visible and all of that, that's all in here. Then the layout here changed a little bit. So I have this group in here now called stage, which is just this seamless backdrop here. I have two different materials, uh, this green one, which looks sort of like this cutting paper. And then uh, you can also switch over to the graph paper, which looks like this. If you don't want the stage, if you want sort of a room setup, you can just disable the stage, enable the room and you get this. The room um, is a little bit bigger now so that all the lights fit in. Oh, by the way, I said this before in another video, but the lights are simply hidden because they sort of, um, they clutter up the scene here. So I always hide those. Okay, the lights are in here in this group. It's a three point lighting setup. Um, the room just has these walls on the floor and they have this black tile material. You can play with that. Or if you want to render like a product visualization for an online shop, you always want nice uh, back, uh, white backgrounds. And this is what this white box, this is sort of like this white photo booth things that you can buy. Um, and the trick here is that uh, there is this backdrop there, which is an, a white emission. So it's perfectly white. And then there's this floor um, surface here. And the secret to this floor surface is that it fades out to be transparent in the back. So what that gives us is when we look through the camera, we do have shadows down here. We have reflections. 
our product, if you render product visualization, uh, visualization isn't just floating in white space. It has, it is set on something, on something white. You have reflections, you have uh, shadows, but it fades out to be perfectly white in the background. So that's what the white box is. Okay, let's go back to stage. We have this shader ball, which is this group. You can just disable it. There's the glass panels, which is just in here uh, to simulate or to demonstrate the architectural glass uh, shader that is part of this. Where is it? Oh, right here. And you can see what that does. So if you look at it straight on, you can perfectly see through it or almost, but you get reflections which is a bit hard to see now with the white box, but you have reflections. But if you look at it um, more from the side, it gets this greenish tint. And then uh, lastly, I now have this brick in here. And that is just because I have a node group in here, which is called edge damage. This is uh, geometry nodes. And it's it just chips away along the edges. It's not very fast because it uses the Boolean modifier but maybe I can come up with a better setup for the future. Anyways, this would be this group in here. So like I said, this is, is or it's meant to be a startup file and this would be the default uh, thing you get when you download it. If you want to use it as a startup file, you just go to file, defaults, save startup file, and then click on save startup file a uh, second time. And then whenever you open Blender, this would be what you start with, this startup file. If you don't want this startup file, if you want the default cube that it, Blender comes with, or you have your own startup file, you can still use the assets from this startup file uh, in whatever your other Blender scene you open. And the way you do that is you go to Preferences, go to the File Paths, and then you put the startup file in some folder on your system. Mine is here. And then you give it a name for the asset library. So crispy makes sense. And then whenever you open a new scene, so let's just do that. Let's do open new general. You can see this is the default startup file. But if I open an asset browser um, and I switch this not to current file, but to the crispy library, you can see we have all of these in here. So let's de delete the default cube, get a seamless backdrop in here. And set this to rendered view. You can see it comes with all the stuff. Or you can drag and drop a material onto this object. So you have all of these in here. You can also see that I play. I put the granite um, materials uh, that are also available uh, separately into this startup file now. And that is because of the brick. Because I wanted a nice material for this brick here. And you can see I have the two different uh, granite materials in here, this gray one, and then this Meissner granite with the, the sort of uh, reddish tones and those brighter veins. Like I said, there are two geometry nodes, uh, things in here that are also assets. This, the one is the edge damage uh, used on this brick here. And then the other one would be on this backdrop here. I have the geometry nodes, node tree on there, which is by default disabled because this is sort of an example for the frustum culling uh, geometry nodes that are now part of this startup file. I have an entire video here on the channel showing you what this frustum culling thing does, but it's now part of this startup file. So you can just enable this here. This is how you use it. This is the frustum culling node tree. You can go into this and check it out what it does, but you plug that in here and you can use its is in view output for the selection of distributing stuff onto your geometry. So in this case, on this seamless backdrop here, when I enable this uh, uh, modifier, I just distribute points randomly with a certain density. Um, I distribute an entire collection, in this case, the, the shader ball. You can see there, these are all tiny replicas of this big shader ball. But the, the thing here is that this frustum culling node takes care of the camera so let me go back to this view. If I take the camera and I move it, you can see it makes sure that, well, let's look through here maybe because this is camera view. If I move the camera, you can see um, it's trying to only render things that are inside of the camera view. And by default, I have set this 
to have sort of a border, you would increase these values here, the width and the height of the camera view. So now if I move forwards, you can see in the camera view, we always see little tiny shader balls everywhere. But in reality, we only have a minimum amount of geometry. If you want to learn more about uh, frostum culling and using geometry nodes for that, check out the video here on the channel. That's it for this quick update. Again, you can get the file from uh, patreon.com slash chrisp. If you have any questions or suggestions, just write a comment down below. Thanks for watching. Chris P out. For more awesome content, like and subscribe now.